Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are gonna be working on my son's 2013 WR250F. We're going to take the forks off and take them apart and work on the seals. All right, things that we're gonna to need to uh, work on the bike. Obviously, we have uh, new fork seals and bushings just in case the other ones are damaged uh, or worn out. We have Bell Ray five weight oil. We got a Tusk brand fork seal driver. We got a syringe and a measuring rod for measuring the oil levels in the shock. I've got a set of calipers for some tolerances that we have to check when we take things apart and put them back together. Lots of rags, lots of Q-tips to get into the little tight spots. Uh, it gets a little oily because the entire inside of the shock is basically coated in oil. So you have to be careful and you have to keep things clean or it starts to track everywhere. Um, we've got some tools here, 19 millimeter open end wrench. We've got a 19 millimeter socket and ratchet, 10 millimeter socket for taking off uh, the bolts on the triple clamps. Uh, we use torque wrench on all the bolts to make sure that we're all in spec and we don't over tighten anything. I've got the Maxima suspension clean. This is what we sprayed the inside and the outside of the shock with to make sure that we got all the dirt off. A uh, small screwdriver for uh, backing out the dust seal. Uh, we've got a little pick to pick out the snap ring for getting uh, to the actual seal itself. And the last thing is the owner's manual. This is gonna tell us all of the torque specifications for all the bolts the, and the oil level that we need for inside the shock. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the top bolts of the triple clamp. The reason why is because we need to loosen this top cap first. And it is easier to do that while it's still in the bike. So you loosen the top bolts first, and then basically you do a quarter of a turn, and that loosens it up. So now when you take it off the bike, you won't struggle to take, hold the shock and to take the cap off. Okay, now if it's tight, which it's going to be, you need to get a uh, screwdriver. And what we have to do is we have to open up these gaps. There's a gap here. There's also a gap up on top right here. All right, so that was a little bit of a struggle. Sometimes they can be, but we got it out. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up the shock, all the dirt, uh, from the top, the bottom, and the sides. Uh, we wanna make sure the bottom's actually pretty clean. Uh, but we wanna get the shock clean before we start taking it apart. And that's also too, there could be some dirt uh, stuck in there. And uh, sometimes it's a little dirty in there. But you can tell, you wanna clean all of this off before you start uh, taking the insides out. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top cap off. And we're gonna set it on a towel on the floor so we don't scratch it up. Now, this is the reason why we loosened it up while it was still on the bike because it's a whole lot easier. Okay, so, and basically what we're gonna do is there is a bolt that is right at the base of the top cap. And that is a 19 millimeter. And we're going to take the top cap off. Now there are a few pieces here that you gotta keep in mind. There's the top cap, which he's gonna take off first. And then there's another piece that holds. So there's the top cap. And then there is another piece that goes over top of the spring. So that's what you guys wanna take note of. And now you're gonna lift the spring out and put it in the bucket. All right, now we have to take the uh, adjustment rod out and you gotta be very careful with this. Take it out very slowly and put it in a safe place. You don't want that to bend. Uh, you wanna make sure that that stays nice and straight. Okay, so now we're gonna drain the old oil out. Okay guys, so now that it's been 10 minutes, we're going to start working on getting the dust seals and the fork seals out. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the dust seal, and that's with a very small flathead screwdriver, and you're gonna basically push it down, and you're gonna 
pry it open. You want to be gentle because the fork tubes, they're made out of aluminum. We don't want to mess those up. Okay, so now we're going to take the pick and grab that little snap ring and get it started. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain, but once you get it over, Okay, so that's the snap ring. And what you were trying to grab onto there is that there's little indentations there right at the end, and that's how you grab, that's where the pick grabs onto. So what we're gonna do here is, Ryan is gonna find where the end, where it, where it, it bottoms out. Okay, so that's where it bottoms out, and he's gonna give it a couple of strong motions, and we're going to separate both tubes with a little bit of force. And that's how you get it off. Okay, so we're wiping things off a little bit to try and get as much oil off as we possibly can. There's one bushing here. This is the second bushing. Uh, this is the, uh, the washer, and you can see that the tabs are facing up. This is the top of the tube, and the, these little tabs are, are upward. Then this is the fork seal, and then we have the dust seal and the snap ring on the other end. So what? What we normally do is we take all of this off and we clean it. So before you take anything off first, so this is the, you have to take this one off first. And what you do is you stick the screwdriver and you turn it. You don't pry it, you turn it and it spreads open a little bit. And that's how you get the, you have to spread it and push it at the same time. Now, if this bushing was worn out, this would be completely polished. Uh, now, it's dull right now. See how it's a little shiny on the edge? If it was shiny all the way across, from my understanding, is that meant that it would have been worn out. But as you can see, uh, this, there's still a lot of life left in this bushing. Okay, so as we take each piece off, we're going to clean it, get all the dirt and grime off. When you take off the um, fork seal, you have to be careful because there's two little ridges here. So you see the little ridges here? Those are, those are sharp. And when you back the dust seal off of this, you gotta be very careful that you take your time and work it around that so we don't damage the fork seal and we can reuse it. All right, so what you wanna do is when you go to take the seal off, you wanna kinda pull up on it a little bit. And you wanna turn it and pull up. And you wanna basically work it around there that's it. There you go. Now it's off and now it comes off nice and easy. The dust seal comes off a little bit easier because it's not as um, tight as the actual uh, fork seal itself. So I want to show you the, the uh, dust cover here. Uh, it's a little dirty um, and basically with a little bit of elbow grease we can get all of this dirt out and it definitely looks like it's in good shape. And this is the fork seal, and it definitely looks like it's still in good shape as well. There isn't any tears. It's still pretty flexible. I mean, it's the, the edge here is not very stiff. It still has a, a good bit of play in it, and there's no tears. So as we suspected, it just got dirty from all the muddy riding that we do. So this is definitely just going to be cleaned, and we can reuse these no problem. So we can save the new ones for another day. So now that we have all of our fork seal clean and our bushings ready to be installed, we're gonna start cleaning uh, the outer tube and then the actual inner tube itself. So right in here, it usually gets pretty dirty in this groove. This is the, uh, the little snap ring groove. And then right in here is where the bushing, uh, the larger bushing uh, is seated. Uh, right in here usually gets real dirty. So what we do is we take some suspension clean and we, um, we spray it down into the tube over the, the drip pan. And then we wipe, first we wipe the top, kind of get those grooves real clean. You know, making sure that uh, every, all the dirt is out. Okay, now what we're gonna do is show you how we clean the inside of the tube. And what we do is we take the suspension clean 
and we just kind of drench the inside of the tube. And then we take that, it's a nice clean one, and then we take a plastic rod that we have and we shove it down through the tube and then we just let it fall on off onto the floor. And then he takes it again, kind of shoves it back down. As you can see, it's nice and clean and shiny in there and that's how we clean the um, inside of the, the outer tube. So now we're gonna set it down in the oil and we're gonna spray the tube with suspension clean and then we're gonna clean it, wipe it down. All right, everything is nice and clean and we are ready for reassembly. So the first thing we're gonna do is protect our, our seals that, that are here. So I bought this from Rocky Mountain ATV. Basically, it's a nifty little cover that goes over top and it covers those uh, two grooves. So before we stick the dust seal on, we're going to add some grease to the inside of it. And we are using Yamaha race grease. And what we're doing is we're lubricating the inside of that so it slides right over top of the fork tube just so nothing binds. So, and we wanna make sure, so what you wanna do is you wanna do spring down. So the spring here is the bottom. So we're gonna do that one first. And we're gonna slide that all the way to the bottom. Then we use the, uh, then we put the snap ring on next. Okay, so now we're ready for uh, the actual fork seal itself. And Yamaha also says to lubricate the inside of the seal and we're going to stick that on now um, the correct way to do this is that the words face down now if you, I don't know if you can see this but there are there are words around uh, this dust seal and you can see some of them don't have springs on them anymore uh, but you want the words to face down so we're going to stick that facing down as you can see, that little applicator just lets it slide right on. Okay, now we have the ring, that little washer and the tabs are facing up, as you can see. Okay, now we take the protector off. We don't need it on there anymore. And you take the larger ring first and what we do is we add a little bit of lubricant on the inside of the ring and on the outside of the ring just so that it seats properly when we go to um, install it onto the outer fork tube. So we just slide that on just a little bit, doesn't have to go all the way down. And then we add a little bit of oil to the other bushing. And that's going so what you want to do is you want to take your fingers and you want to open it up a little bit when you slide it over. And again, it doesn't take much, just a little bit. Slide that on until you hear it snap. Okay, so now that's seated. So now what we need to do is we need to add a little bit of oil to the outer fork tube. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow those bushings to slide in there a lot easier. Because again, all of these things are gonna be saturated in oil anyway, so we're just kinda getting things ready so they slide in nicely. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, if you use the outer, t the, the uh, bottom fork tube and you put it upside down, which is what most people do, oil starts to drain out of this and it, it basically is a mess. It basically is a mess. So what we're gonna attempt to do here is to do this horizontally. So what Ryan is doing is he's, He's putting the two tubes together. That first bushing went, goes on and it doesn't, it, it basically slides. Now the, the first, the second bushing is gonna need to be tamped into place with the fork seal driver. Now this fork seal driver comes in different, um, in different sizes. Uh, this size here is a 48, 48 millimeter. Also, too, I'm actually holding this up for Ryan so he can 
I can hold the tube up. So two people working on this, probably not a bad idea if you guys are gonna wanna do this yourself, but it can be done by yourself. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just basically tap that in. Okay, so we got that tapped in. Okay, now we slide the next piece down and then we use the, the driver and we tap that in as well. And we're gonna, you wanna wanna give it some force. Now, if you notice, when he first started to hit it, it was kind of a, 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 a not very solid. It was kind of hollow sounding. And then when he hit it the second time, it was kind of a, a, a solid hit, you know, like you were hitting metal to metal. That's what you want to do. You want to, you want to tap it in, but you want to make it feel solid. And that's, again, it was hollow sounding and then it sounded firm. All right, so now we have the fork seals in and then the snap ring goes in. And the trick there is to just attach one side in first and then use your fingers and push it in and then use the fork seal driver. And um, that will just, you don't really want to slam it, you just kind of want to there you go. So just it just basically seats that. All right, so the last thing is to slide the dust seal up into the forks. All right, so now we're gonna begin the process of filling uh, the shock full of fluid. So as Ryan's pouring the oil in, we, it's very important that you don't get oil down the center of that, where the, uh, I guess you would say the, the dampening tube or the adjuster tube, you want to make sure that the oil is on the side of it. You don't want to pour any oil down the center of that. All right, so you can see it now. It's, it's pretty high. It's not completely uh, full. It's probably about three inches down. All right, so the next thing is that you're going to want to pull the damper rod out, in and out, very slowly not bottoming it out going up and not bottoming it out going down. All right, so now we're going to pull the damper rod in and out very slowly 10 times. Because you can see the fluid definitely has gone down probably about two inches. So we know that the fluid has been distributed. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill it back up to about three inches from the top again. Careful again not to get any oil down the center. Okay, so that's good. That's back up. All right, so now according to the instructions, we're going to, we're gonna cycle the bottom. Now what you're gonna do is you wanna go up and down. You don't wanna go any more than 200 millimeters and you don't wanna bottom it out. You want to go up and down. Don't do any extreme motions. We're going to do this 10 times. Okay, so now we got that finished. Um, we're going to set that in the corner and they say that you need to let that sit for 10 minutes. While we are waiting for the air bubbles to uh, rise to the top, uh, we are going to take the uh, fork top cap, and as you can see here, they have the adjuster screw here. Now, before we install this, we have to back this all the way out, finger tight, but we want to count the clicks so you guys remember what suspension setting that you have. All right, so now that we've counted the clicks and wrote those down, we're going to back out the bleeder screw and make sure that the O-ring in there is still good. Nothing's broken in there. Just kind of do a little quick inspection. All right, so that is still in really good shape. And we'll just reinstall that. And we're also gonna check the O-ring around the top cap. And it is definitely in good shape, no rips or tears. So now that we have all the air uh, bled out of the system and the fork has sat for 10 minutes, we are ready to uh, do the correct leveling of the fluid. 
Now what this is, is this is a graduated, um, uh, basically it's like a straw. So from here to here, we've measured 132 millimeters. And see if I can zoom in, you see the numbers on here? That indicates um, the depth of the oil. So we're going to stick that in the top of the shock and obviously it's below the top height of the oil. And now what we're gonna do is take the syringe and start sucking out the oil until the oil stops and we know that it's at the correct height. Okay, so now that the syringe is not pulling out any more oil, we know that the height of the oil is correct. All right, so we have to check the height of the tube here to the top of the bolt, and that needs to be 18 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is take the calipers and we're gonna set it for 18 millimeters, and then we're gonna lock it, and we're going to check to make sure, and it is for the most part, yep, that's pretty much what it is, okay. Okay, so now we can install the spring, and this is a little tricky. You gotta pull the damper rod all the way out, and then you gotta pinch it with your other fingers, and then you gotta grab the spring, and we're doing it over the, the towel because it's gonna drip a little bit, and you're gonna set the spring over top, and what you gotta do is you gotta get it down before <laughs> the damper rod falls. It's a little tricky. If somebody else has a trick that we're not picking up on this, then please leave a comment below. All right, so we got the spring on. Now we put the push rod in. And then the cup. And as you can see, the cup has a top and a bottom to it. And we wanna make sure that the beveled part is facing down. That centers the spring. And now you have the top cap, and we have the screw still backed out. All right, so now we have it finger tight. We're going to need to torque the uh, top cap, and you're gonna need a 19 millimeter open end wrench. And again, you gotta kind of fish it in to the top there so that in between the spring, and then you're gonna take the um, torque wrench. Now it's set at 21 and we're gonna tighten that down. Now the easiest way to do it is to start at a 90 degree and there we go. Okay, and then the last step is we're gonna bring up the fork tube. We're gonna tighten this as much as we possibly can and we will have to finish tightening this after it's already installed back on the bike. We want to reestablish our dampening position and we're gonna remember what, how many clicks we had and we're going to set that now. It makes it easier to do that now than when it's on the bike because the handlebars can sometimes get in the way. All right, so now we're ready to install the fork tube. We're gonna slide that up in. And as you remember, it was difficult uh, to get it through the bottom triple clamp. So we got to open it back up and slide it. Okay, so there is one last specification that we have to do, and that is to make sure that the top of this clamp to the top of where the bevel starts here is five millimeters. And as you can see on the other side here, we did this one already. You can see, see that line? That is the five millimeter line. So we're gonna make sure that this is at five millimeters. So we're gonna slide that up a little bit. And that is a perfect, Ryan did a super job. That is exactly where it needs to be. And also too, um, you can see on the top here, you see where the bleed screw is? The bleed screw is towards the front of the bike and that's where you wanna have it because it's easier to get to the bleed screw from the front than it is in the back. 
So we have to tighten up the lower bolts first, and we're gonna do that. All right, so now that we've got these bolts for the most part tight, we wanna uh, tighten the top cap, and that is 21 foot-pounds. What we do is we basically just make it tight because I don't wanna take the handlebars off, so we basically tighten it up man tight here in the garage. Now we are ready to tighten these bolts up and finish torquing. The torque specification on these bolts are 15, not very much. All right, we're not done yet. We forgot one last thing and we actually did this on the last fork and that was the uh, guard for the uh, fork guard. And we were able to bend it around the fork without damaging it. And we were able to, <laughs> we didn't think we could do this, but it actually does work. <laughs> so you don't actually have to take the shocks back off again if you forget to put this piece of plastic on. So now we are officially done. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I'm going to put links in the description below on all the fluids that we use and all the tools that we use. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I usually answer all questions within 24 hours. If you have any comments about what I did, is whether being right or wrong, or maybe, hey, try this or try that, I am all up for that. Uh, we're all about learning here, and I want to do the best that I can to help you guys learn about motorcycles. If you like this video, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell so you won't miss our next episode. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.